Ellenberg, and I'm a sophomore here in the college. I'm studying chemistry and dance, and today I'd like to tell you a little bit about an herbaceous plant called Angelica archangelica. Angelica is a part of the APAC family, which also includes things like carrots and parsley. An overview of the plant, it's an unusually tall herb. It can reach heights of up to eight feet, which is pretty, tri or pretty impressive for an herb. We usually think of herbs as lying low to the ground. Um, it's naturally found in Scandinavia. It has a really long history of traditional use, and actually the vast majority of the literature that I found on this plant had to do with the traditional use, um, mostly anthropological and historical research. It's very fragrant. It smells like celery, in my opinion, and it's used often in cooking. There have been many, many promising biological studies, but there's only been one clinical study to date that I have found. And it remains an important ethnobotanical plant today, However, it's not used much in Scandinavia, but it is used in parts of Asia. For the botanical description, it's very tall and it may reach um, up to eight feet in height. It has a long, hollow stalk that can be a variety of colors, but most often it's either green or a grayish purple color. And it branches into a compound umbel, meaning um, the stalk branches up and kind of has like fingers coming out of it. They're small flowers and they can be um, anywhere from yellow to white to green, but they're very vivid and bright. Um, there are green leaves and they're long and pinnate, and it has a strong fragrance that's minty, citrusy, and has some earthy undertones. And again, I think it smells like celery, and a lot of other people tend to agree. Um, and it does have a fruit. It's a green pod-shaped fruit that contains two seeds. But um, as far as I have read, I don't think many people actually eat the fruit. They are more interested in kind of the stalks and the roots of the plant. Um, and again, it's most commonly found in sub-Arctic Europe, um, primarily on the Scandinavian peninsula, although it can be found anywhere where there is cold, moist environments. Um, some traditional uses, and there's quite a lot. Um, the name is derived from St. Michael the Archangel. Um, so Angelica Archangelica, I think the, the connection is pretty clear. And the reason why it's named after St. Michael was because reportedly the plant bloomed every year on May 8th, which happens to be the feast day of St. Michael. Um, interestingly, people today notice that the plant blooms around late July, so there's a little bit of discrepancy there, but there have been so many reports of this May 8th annual blooming that um, Angelica has kept its name throughout the years. Um, it's considered to be a magical plant. Um, it's supposed to have healing powers and ward off evil forces. And back in the day, um, parents would make their children these intricate, um, intricate necklaces and bracelets of the flowers of the plant to ward off like malevolent spirits. Um, the origins of um, of Angelica's um, properties as a magical plant may have originated in Latvia. There's a story that um, these Latvian wanderers were marching through the forest and they had a bunch of Archangelica with them. And the people noticed they found them, that they were speaking this language that no one understood and not even the people that were chanting. And so they thought maybe that the plant had some kind of divine power that was giving them um, this ability to speak in unknown languages. And traditionally, it's used widely in culinary pursuits. So for example, I found that in Sweden, it's commonly used to flavor reindeer milk. Um, but more commonly, it's used in salads, of course, with the leaves. They candy the stems as a treat around the holidays. And it's used to flavor alcohol, specifically gin. Um, and another interesting thing I found that in the mid-1600s, when the bubonic plague was going around, um, it was the official remedy um, in England for the plague. And they called it the King's Majesty's Most Excellent Recipe for the Plague. And what you would do is you would make a syrup made of nutmeg, sugar, and angelica. You'd crush it up, and then um, you would take it orally twice daily. And from what I read, people consider this to be um, a pretty tasty treatment. It's very sweet. Um, the chemistry and pharmacology, there's two main classes of compounds that are responsible for the activity of angelica. These are the monoterpenes and the coumarins. The monoterpenes are responsible for the celery-like fragrance, and they serve also as antioxidants. Um, they can make up to 77% of the essential oil, which is, which is pretty dense. Um, the most common monoterpene is beta-felandrine, and it makes up um, this purple portion of the pie chart. And then the second um, most common monoterpene is alpha-trimine. For the coumarins, they are responsible for the majority of the bioactivity, and they are most concentrated in the fruit. But again, um, most often people don't really eat the fruit. They're more interested in the stalks and the stems. 
And the two main compounds are imperatorin and xanthotoxin. And imperatorin is about two times more abundant than um, xanthotoxin. And as you can see, they're pretty similar compounds. They just have a different alkyl group coming off of the, um, the oxygen. For the biological activity, there have been many, many studies. Um, but most commonly, they only test for four things. And this is anti-carcinogenic activity, hepatoprotective effects, or liver protecting effects, used as an anxiolytic or anti-anxiety drug, and a healing agent for lead poisoning. So for the anti-carcinogenic activity, it has been displayed, or it has displayed um, significant activity. And the studies think that um, this may be due to the presence of coumarins, but I found a lot of studies that also argued against this, so it's kind of up in the air at this point. So more research is needed. For the liver protecting effects, um, it indeed displays hepatoprotective effects, and this is because it inhibits oxygen free radicals from forming, or in other words, it's an antioxidant. Um, for use as an anxiolytic, it significantly reduced anxiety levels in mice, and this was um, present in about 10 studies. So they've done a lot of studies with its anti-anxiety properties. And again, they cannot, con um, they cannot contribute all of the activity due to one single compound. They think it's more likely synergistic activity of all of the chemicals together. Um, and lastly, as a healing agent for lead poisoning, it has been found to greatly reverse um, the effects of lead poisoning, but not only does it do this, it actually rejuvenates the liver. So it could also be used for a variety of other liver ailments. For the clinical studies, I've only found one um, to date, but it was pretty interesting. Um, the Japanese Geriatric Society made a compound that combined um, Angelica Archie Angelica and ferulic acid. And they gave it to 20 patients that were suffering from, from dementia. And 95% of these patients saw a significant decrease in their symptoms over a month's time. And these symptoms include things like irritability, anxiety, hallucinations, and delusions. And although that, um, this study is super promising, um, there was only 20 participants in the study, so a larger sample needs to definitely be undertaken before any definite conclusions can be made. For the contraindications, it's generally regarded as safe by the FDA, but this is only for culinary uses. Um, it is often eaten like a vegetable, um, like roasted like an eggplant, I think is a common way to eat it. It's not recommended for pregnant or breastfeeding women, and diabetics should take caution. And this is because Angelica um, may raise your blood sugar level. Um, and also, a big thing that I found was people who try to collect Angelica in the wild um, may harvest actually um, Cicada virosa, which looks very similar to um, Angelica. And this is very bad because it's super poisonous. Um, and it looks very, very similar, especially the um, Angelica that grows that has um, white leaves. And on the bottom, this is the Cicada virosa, and on the top is Angelica. So you can see they look pretty similar. For current uses, the root is used vaguely as an aromatherapeutic agent. Um, it has very relaxing properties. It smells very good. Um, it's also used to treat digestive problems, um, and it can be used to um, make a tea also that you eat or you drink after you have a big meal to kind of relieve and prevent colic. Um, it's also used for female reproductive um, pain, such as painful menstruation or um, really painful labor. Also, it can be chewed as a dentifrice or like a toothpaste. It has some antimicrobial properties um, when taken orally. The leaves are often boiled into a tea and it relieves anxiety. And also, like I said before, you can drink it after meals to prevent colic. Um, topically, it can be applied as a respiratory remedy. It smells kind of uh, minty, so um, it's similar to mentholic compounds. You can use it to treat bronchitis, a common cold or cough. And the stalks and stems are often cooked and eaten. And interestingly, people find that when they eat it, it has a, tem a temporary anesthetic effect on the mouth. Um, it's not super powerful, but there is a little bit of numbing that takes place. It's known to stimulate the immune system, and it's generally emotionally stabilizing. In conclusion, the monoterpenes and coumarins are the two main compounds that are responsible for um, Angelica's uh, biological activity. Um, there's a lot of potential research to be done, especially um, when treating cancer, protecting the liver, and rejuvenating the body after lead poisoning. Um, one thing that we do need to take note of is Angelica um, takes a long time to grow. Uh, it takes about four years before um, it flowers, which is pretty interesting. 
So um, people who have started harvesting this have noticed that it's quickly becoming endangered. Um, so we need to make sure we are cultivating it responsibly. Um, and only one clinical study has been reported, yet the plant displays um, a huge potential to be a medicinal remedy. That's it. Any questions?